Today we're working on a project that many of you have been wondering and worrying about, and that is backsplashes for the kitchen countertops. For two reasons. For one thing, to prevent things from rolling off behind our counter and down the window crack. But for another thing, um, there's going to be backsplash across this side too, so that when you wipe the countertops, it doesn't just wear out the wood from all the wiping. Itself without any backing. It just I, feels so strong. I think your method of using pocket holes was really brilliant. And he's just doing the pocket holes right in the front of these pieces because um, they're gonna it's gonna get a topper piece on the top edge and then it's gonna be tiled, just a narrow strip of tiling is what we're planning on doing there. Yeah, that's rough, tough, and ready to go. Rough, tough, and buff. Rough, tough, and, and good buff. enough. These ones don't need pocket screws because we can just screw it into the wall oh, right there. Oh, right. Okay, so there's a reason. <coughs> Hold this for a second. There's a reason why this backsplash is so low, like why we're not doing a big backsplash is because we didn't want to block off the light from coming in this window. And we still want to be able to open this window completely all the way and when it's open all the way I guess I didn't there when it's open all the way you need to be able to fit your hands in here to get it back up again so we just needed a low little backsplash Oh my gosh, is my tile going to fit behind the edge of the sink right there? Just barely. Okay. There's a quarter inch. So if you're planning on doing something like this, make sure you need leave enough room in the back for a board and the thickness of your tile and then the edge of the sink. Not that we did that on purpose. Yeah, that was the happenstance. And the <laughs> But if you're planning it on purpose, you could leave like an, an extra quarter of an inch in there so there would be a little bit of a gap between the metal and the metal. Yes. Ooh, this stinks. Your drill again? Yeah. It really has a horrible smell to it, <laughs> strangely enough. <laughs> it gets four stars because he loses a star for smell. Oh, it's like burnt ozone. It's not even a good smell of ozone. Oh, yeah, it's... It smells burning. Yeah, it's rough. So, in order to make this look really nice, we want to do a, a corner on this. Oh, really? Yeah. That'll be fancy. Okay, so this one is, oh, oh, yeah, all the way from there, there, uh, 23 and 1 16th. That looks really nice. Very nice. 
Let me get up in here. Look at that. Slick. Can do. Definitely. Okay, so we gotta do the same thing to this side. Now we're gonna make these little end pieces. Slivers, which should be two and a quarter plus a quarter. Or whatever this measures. Two and three quarters, just slightly under. stickers on here. Right. Just want to strangle them. This trim sure looks a lot prettier with stain on it, doesn't it? It sure does. The green just looks great. And now, all the little shorties. This is that attention to detail we talk about. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, this is why it's taking so long to build our bus. It's not that I couldn't have got it done sooner. It's just that we couldn't get it done sooner. With this degree <laughs> of detail. Because we would lose our absolute minds. Yeah. All right, drying time. First, uh, first coat's never really impressive. It's the second one that really brings it out and makes it awesome. Yeah. Mike and I were just agreeing that we can't wait for that moment when we've stained the last thing in the bus or put wipe on poly on the last thing in the bus. So much. But how will we know? <laughs> Look, you guys, our trim looks like strips of bacon. <laughs> That's gonna be so nice. cool. Our little bacon strips. There we go. Corners look so nice the way you did. Yeah, I like how they turned out too. It really does. It's very nice. Probably should have made it hang over and done it the other way, but we're committed at this point. There you go. So we got this in here. Finally, we got that little bit. <coughs> Let's cut this and put it in too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. really good actually. Oh, that makes it look so much better. Even though I taped it off up there when I painted, the, t the paint squished up under the edge of the paint where I, or uh, under the edge of the tape where I didn't, I guess I didn't press it down hard enough. So this totally covers up all of the flaws. Go. It looks so good. Way it looks really finished, doesn't it? It looks yeah. like it was supposed to be like that. It's totally great. Thanks, my honey. I like how the backsplash is gonna. I can see it in my mind's eye now. Yeah. 
I can see how the, having that tile in there is going to make it look so finished and nice and protected and just awesome in general. Cha-ching! Right? Check mark! It's only like 900 more. We're almost done. Hey you guys, it's actually been a really long time since we first got started on these backsplashes, but um, then we got started on painting the bus, which is why you see the brown paper and tape over the windows right now. But we can't get back to the painting project until Mike is on his next four days off, because while he's working, he leaves for work one morning and he doesn't get back home till the next morning, and by that time the sun is up too high and the bus is too hot to paint. So I thought I'd come back around to working on another project in the meantime. Now all I have to do is choose between the black tile or the white tile but I think I already have an idea and you might be surprised but I think I'm gonna cut them down to a smaller size first Mike's back at work again today and we're not finished painting the bus which means we don't have a video for this Thursday so I'm gonna try to work on finishing the backsplash tile and film it and edit it <laughs> to hopefully get a video out I don't know it might be a day late or something sorry if it is um, but you guys want to see what I have so far? I'm setting up the tiles. I'm just putting them in place with the little spacers to see how it looks and also to make the final cuts like some of the tiles at the end have to be cut shorter to fit into place. So here's what it looks like so far. What do you think? That was my crazy idea you guys. I wanted this black and white checkerboard sort of finish. This for me is kind of like a nod towards those iconic black and white checkered floors of the 1950s, which I think were probably a nod to the black and white checkered marble floors of ancient Greece and Rome. But anyway, I love that whole like 1950s kitchen look, and but I couldn't have black and white checkerboard tiles only in the kitchen because you can't really switch from like one kind of flooring to another like right in the middle of the bus it would be awkward to cover up that seam and the um the tiles and the other flooring might be different heights so they might not match up so i couldn't have a black and white checkerboard floor i thought i would have a little bit of the black and white um not really checkerboard but a little bit of the black and white look in the little tiny backsplash around the back of our counters. So here's what I'm doing. I'm just putting in these little spacers um, the way you would when you're actually setting the tile, but I'm just doing it now to um, measure where the last piece needs to be cut. I, well, I'm actually marking it exactly where the edge is, and then I'll go an eighth of an inch away from that to make the final cut. Um, so there's an eighth of an inch light of grout at the end of the tile there too. And then um, obviously doing the same on the other side. Oh, one more thing. My filthy work apron. I need to wash it so bad. Okay, let's do this. Oh, glasses. Now let's do this. Let's go put them in place and see if they fit. 
Okay, this one goes by the fridge. Wait, I need to wipe it off. By the fridge. Oh, it looks crooked. I might recut that one. I'm not sure yet. That one's perfect. Um, that one doesn't leave much of a gap. That's only like a sixteenth of an inch gap. I don't think I did all that great at my tile cutting. We're setting up the fence for these last two so I get really straight cut. No more of this angled nonsense. Now this, this just needs an eighth of an inch trim. So Okay, let's see how we did this time. Okay, much better. We have to turn it this way. Yeah, much better. Now we have this one. Perfect. And this one. Oh my gosh, that one is so perfect. Yes, it looks so good. What do you think? Shall we go ahead and mix up some thin set? I better get everything ready first because I have to film and work at the same time. I've created a specialty tool out of a Parmesan cheese lid <laughs> and I've cut it to exactly the right size to fit into the backsplash so I can spread the thin set in there. And then we also purchased for 79 cents this fabulous plastic spreader tool which I sawed in half with the tile saw. So it too on the eighth inch notches will fit right into that little um, narrow backsplash that we have. So I guess all I have left to do now is mix up the thin set and get started. Now the hard part is waiting to five to ten minutes for the little chemical reaction to take place inside my thin set. <gasps> hum -de dum waiting for it to be ready. Ding! It's ready! Okay, let's see how my tools worked out. Okay, I think it'll work. I'm gonna have to make it work. That's all I have. Okay, next tool, this one. I need my glasses on, what the heck? Oh, now I can see. out how to get all the spacers to where they need to be. I've never used spacers and actually set real tile before. The only tiling I've been done doing is um, broken dish mosaics and yeah, broken dish mosaics. <laughs>
almost done except for cleanup. Looks pretty good though. Well, you guys, Mike's not here again. He had to stay at work late for a meeting at his paramedic job, and then he has to go set up a computer for somebody at his IT job on the side. So it's just us and the bus today, I guess. But what do you think so far? I love the way it looks. <laughs> I know not everybody is going to love this, <laughs> but it reminds me of a freaking cartoon. You know what it looks like? It looks like, um, if you know who Mary Inglebright is as an artist, she does these little artwork, little Mary Inglebright artwork always has black and white patterns like this around it. I think it's so cute. Okay, what do we got to do? Today, I think I'm going to tape off my work area to make it easier for cleanup. I don't think professional tilers would be taping off their job like this, but then again, I don't think they would usually be working in a, an area that's framed in by wood. And um, when I was doing the thin set yesterday and then cleaning up, I was finding the thin set was kind of getting into some little grooves in the wood. And I didn't want that to happen again today because it was hard to clean up. So I think this will be better. It's easier for me to keep it straight if I just do short pieces at a time like this. If I try to do long ones, it gets all over the place. I'm going to make it really easy for cleanup. Not around the sink, though. The sink's going to be too difficult, and I'm going to have to do some precision work down there. Probably better move your booty, Mommy Kitty. I'll just work around you, princess, princess mama Sita. There, look at that. We're going to have a much easier time of cleanup today. Okay, I've reached a temporary standstill now. My box of gray grout had partially solidified, so now I have to wait for Mike to be finished with his jobs to pick me up some grout and bring it home. So I don't think there's any way I'm going to have this video out by Thursday today. I, it might be late, so I apologize for that, but we're just going to keep on going. Oh, wow. That is so neat. What do you think? I love it. Wow. Oh man, it adds such a neat character to this room. I need to change. I need a big drink of water. Do all those things. It is time. <laughs> For me to finish grouting the kitchen. Okay. Really getting into the cracks? I'm trying. <laughs> wow, I didn't know you had to get so much in there. Aren't you supposed to like squish it in there with a squeegee or something? Well, you're supposed to just go back and forth, back and forth over it like this, and it uh, works it down in. You want to go different directions, up, right. down, back and forth. But normally you're doing it on a whole big wall. It's kind of weird just barely working in this tiny, tiny little area.
Yay! The end is near! How's it turn out? Um, it looks so far so good. It's going to take a lot more. Maybe we should pull paper now. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. Do it. This one down here, correct? Well, no, take off the top first. Oh. Because then we can just, with all the crumbs on it, you can just dump it down, dump it sure. forward. And then. Uh, oh, it looks so cool. Yeah. Look at it. <laughs> I know, it looks so good, huh? They know if I say I like it, that I really like it. Because they know that if I didn't like it, I would be saying I didn't like it. And she would cry. And possibly even crying, right? She used to say, we all know Carrie's a sissy lala. I'm a girl and I know it. Better than I thought. Better than you thought? Thank you, my honey. It really enhances the kid. It just brings this eclectic thing in here that I can't even explain. It's, it is so good. It's a nice vibe, huh? Yeah, really like it. I can't even believe it. That is yeah, absolutely artistic and beautiful. Well, you're the only one I was hoping would like it, so I've done my job. It's incredible. It brings something to the kitchen. Yay! That just, like, it just brings something in here so good. A desire to play checkers? Sort of. <laughs> okay, well, um, I think that pretty much wraps up this episode. Bussy McBuss face. <laughs> Come back next week when hopefully we'll have a video out by Thursday. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but I